Hi, and welcome to the Two Steps Demo, where I'm going to show you how you can build synthetic monitoring tests across any application using no code, no scripting, no embedded agents. This really is one of the most flexible synthetic monitoring solutions in the market. So what we're looking at right now is my sales demo, and you can see we're looking at the current status screen. So this is a top line level uh, dashboard that shows that we're running a number of tests and most of them are running fine. We've got most of them in green running at 100%, but we've got a couple that have had some problems over the last hour. So what we can do is we can drill into one of those tests and see exactly what's going on. So you can see that we've got a bit of a spike here and these color coordinated uh, bar graphs match to the checkpoints. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about checkpoints when I'm building a synthetic monitoring test. Um, now we can do various things. We can have a look at the time range. Maybe I want to have a look at how they've performed over the last week. We see, yeah, it's getting a little bit lumpy in some places. Uh, we can have a look at results uh, across different locations. Uh, we can have a look at results that are just okay and ones that have failed. We might even want to look at a completely different test. So let's have a look at email tickets. Now this one's a little bit more complicated. It's got a number of more checkpoints uh, and you can see that we've run into some problems here with the test. So just by clicking, I can drill into that specific test and see that the window setup checkpoint was okay, but we've got a problem with launching the email client. So I can have a look at the video replay and see exactly what happened. So this is one of the unique capabilities of Two Steps. Not only are we producing performance results via charts and graphs, we can also bring back video replays of what actually happened and what did the end user experience. It's going to be really, really valuable when you're trying to get to pro problem resolution or even if you're um, speaking to one of your third party application vendors and trying to show them that their application is performing suboptimally. OK, let's hop out of that and let's have a look at how we actually build one of these tests. So I'm going to move into the synthetic test editor. Okay, I don't want to restore that. Um, so let's have a look at building a new test. Now uh, we'll call this test a name. And here I've got a variety of different application types that I can test. I can test uh, native Android apps, uh, something on Chrome, Firefox. I've got a terminal emulator and I've got Windows. Uh, but let's start off with just a very simple uh, web test. So I'm going to put in the URL. Uh, this is one of the big banks in Australia for those unaware. And what we're looking at here is on the left hand side, the canvas is the website that we want to monitor. And on the right hand side is what we call our test builder. And you can see ANZ123 uh, is the name of our test. Now, as I navigate and hover over different areas of the screen, you can see that Two Steps is actually starting to look at the unique elements of the screen. And that's important because the backbone of Two Steps automation is through visual recognition. So that is the way that we're able to uh, deploy synthetic monitoring on things like Windows and Citrix um, because we're not using Selenium. We're not interrogating the DOM. We're simply looking at the screen and telling Two Steps what to look for and what to do. And that is how we do the automation. So uh, I'm just going to do a very simple test here. I'm going to click on the login button and essentially I'm just going to navigate through this website as a customer would. So as I've clicked on the login button, this black box appears and this is what we call our command builder. So immediately Two Steps has labeled this part of the test, login to internet banking, and it's predicted that it would like me to click the image. We've also got uh, enter text, wait for image. We can handle if statements, we can mouse over the image. And under each of these options, there are advanced options as well. So maybe I wanna double click or right click. All of that is available here. But in this first part of the test, I just want to log in. I just wanna click that button. So I press okay. And you can see a couple of things happen. The first is this part of the test has been built. Click, log into internet banking and the page is moved on as it should. 
So the next part is to enter our customer registration number. And again, we are labeling this automatically. This time we want to click and enter some text. So let's put that number in, click OK. And you can see the two steps robot doing the work for me. OK, we now want to put in the password. But of course, we want to encrypt this and hide that. OK. And finally, we want to log in. Now, a word of warning, this is my old bank account. So the uh, result that we're expecting is for the account to be disabled. So click login and OK and let's have a look it's loading access locked that is exactly what we were expecting so the final part of the test i'm just going to highlight this area i'm going to say wait for the image which is the error icon and that tells me that uh, the test has run successfully okay so we've built our test and now if i hover over these numbers we get a preview of each part of the test so if somebody had built, somebody else had built this test and I wanted to have a look and understand what they'd actually done, it's very simple to do that just by hovering over. Now, I mentioned checkpoints, so let's start to add a checkpoint. A checkpoint is basically a way where you can concatenate a number of steps in a test to create more business logic. So this may be called CRN number entry. And this one could be, uh, we'll call this password entry. Okay, so I've now added a couple of checkpoints. Uh, now I might want to play around with the performance SLAs. So here the default is uh, if it takes longer than 30 seconds, I'm going to get a warning. If it takes longer than 60 seconds, the test is going to be deemed as a failure. So that seems a bit generous to me. So I want to change that to five seconds. So if it takes more than five seconds, please warn me. If it takes longer than 10 seconds, please see it as a failure. Click update. I'll do the same here, five and 10, okay. All right, so we've now built our test, we've previewed it, looks good, we've added our checkpoints, we've created our SLAs, now it's time to save and move into the scheduler. Now, the schedule is where we play around with the cadence, so maybe we wanna run that test every 10 minutes. Maybe we wanna run it just Monday to Friday, or maybe we just want to run it on the weekends. Uh, so all of that is available here. And here is where you would tell the robot where to run the test from. So if you had a number of geographical locations and you wanted to understand the performance from each location, then we have the ability to deploy a monitoring node at each location. And this is where you would tell the robot to run it from. OK, that's great. So we would just run the test and uh, the robot starts working. Now, that was... Now that was a Chrome test, but what if we wanted to do Windows? Okay, well, let's choose Windows under the type. And as you can see, now I'm not in Chrome, I'm actually in a Windows operating system. And it works exactly the same. We're just going to click through, uh, close down that hanging Skype window, and we'll just build some automation using clicks and points. Um, and let's see how we go. So, okay, let's put in, I don't know, let's have a look for notepad. So I'm just doing this very quickly and not labeling things. So I'm being a bit lazy, so excuse me for that. Okay. And I'm gonna open up notepad. Now this is interesting because notepad obviously is quite blank. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to click on the format piece. So that's the unique image that we're gonna find, but we want to click down here. This is where the crosshairs is going to click and There we go. And so automating on Windows exactly the same way um, as I did with uh, Chrome. And just to finish this off, 
let's have a look at what Android looks like. So again, we're now not in Chrome, not in Windows, we're in an Android, a virtualized Android environment, but it works exactly the same. Two steps is just looking at the screen and it's asking what you want me to do. So hopefully you found that useful. Um, we um, would love to hear from you if you have requirements in a hybrid IT environment, if you're looking for something that's uh, on-premise, um, if you're concerned about data sovereignty, um, then those tend to be really, really good uh, fits for two steps. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for the next video.